Today we're going to learn about the imaginary numbers and going back to your warm-up, the imaginary numbers with the real numbers form the set of complex numbers. And then from the real, again, you have your rational, irrational, and then so on and so forth under your rational. But together, with the set of real numbers, we have this set of complex numbers. And the complex numbers, um, or imaginary numbers, rather, to start the note page, were invented to define the square root of negative numbers. So if you go to your calculator and you type in the square root of positive 25, we get 5. Now if we type in the square root of negative 25, we have an error and it says a non-real answer. We can't take the square roots of negative numbers. So again, scientists and engineers, they came up with this set of numbers called the imaginaries to, or so that we can take the square root of a negative number. Okay, and our imaginary unit is defined as the square root of negative one. And they chose one because one is a factor of every number. Anything times itself is one, okay? Imaginary numbers are written in the form bi. So if you look down at the set of imaginary, imaginary numbers here, our b is a three, here our b is a negative five, and the b here would be a one. We just don't typically write the one. So the b is some real number, okay? But it can't be equal to zero because zero i, which means zero times i, zero times anything is zero, okay? On the calculator, you can do calculations with imaginary numbers if you are in the correct mode. So if you press mode on your calculator, you'll see this screen, and I'm going to do this with you. Um, when I exit the Active Inspire software. You want to go down to where it says real mode. So right now your calculator is in real number mode as you are typically working with real numbers. I want you to highlight this A plus BI mode, which is your imaginary or complex number mode. So if we go to the calculator and press mode, get out of that, mode, Again, go down and highlight A plus BI, enter. I press down just to make sure that it's still highlighted. Now when I go back and take the square root of negative 25, it gives me an answer in terms of I, or in terms of the imaginary unit. The square root of negative 3, okay? I don't get um, a an integer value, but I do get 1.7, and then the i, and that's because 3 is not a perfect square. Try taking the square of a perfect square, such as negative 9, and you do get 3i. But if you notice, every one of those expressions, my answers, were in terms of an imaginary unit. Now, at this note here, going back to the last unit, when you square a radical or square root, those are inverse operations, so it cancels, and that is equal to a negative 1. But if the square root of negative 1, which is i, is i squared, we know that i squared is equal to negative 1, which you can do on your calculator. The i button is down where the decimal point is, so type in second, your decimal point, i squared, and you do get negative 1. Moving down to the examples, we have the first row are all of our perfect squares, and you can factor out the negative 1 in every case. So negative 25 is 25 times negative 1, and this is your i, so the answer is 5i as we had shown on the calculator. Um, but you don't need to use that, you just need to highlight 
or indicate because of that negative, we have an I in our answer. And that's all the I is doing. Okay, so in the next example, we know the square root of a positive 121 is 11. But because we have that negative underneath the radical symbol, the square root of a negative is 11i. The i is just indicating that we're taking the square root of a negative versus the square root of a positive. So in number 3, this would be 3 times 4i is the square root of 16 or negative 16. Once again, the negative gives you the i, which is 12i. Now the next row deals with non-perfect squares and this should actually be cannot be simplified where these can be simplified, the final row. 7, 2, and 5, those are all numbers that have no perfect square factors. In fact, they are all prime. So I cannot simplify those. So the 7, the 2, and the 5 all need to stay underneath the radical. And then just to indicate that we have the negative under the square root, we need to put the i in front. Now, you could essentially, so radical 7i is not wrong, but we don't put it at the end because for some, as they write it, it may look like it's out front, or underneath rather, um, and not outside of the radical like that's clear, or it may be a little unclear. So we just, so there's no confusion we bring it out front like a coefficient. So because in number five and number six, because of that negative, you have to pull out an i in front. So some other examples would be the square root of negative 10 would be i radical 10. The square root of another number that can't be simplified would be 3. So that would be i radical 3. The last row. If you look at 12, 18, 45, they all have a perfect square factor, okay? So they can be simplified. So if you look at the 12, which would be 4 times 3 as a positive 12, final answer would be 2 radical 3, and because of that negative symbol, we need the i in front. So you can pull out the i right away, you could do it that way, or you could put the negative with your perfect square, and just like we did this question here, I'd like you to go right to the 5i. Square root of negative 4 would be 2i, and then radical 3. So negative. In my last section, they preferred this method, so I'm going to continue with this class as well. So 18 is 9 times 2, and putting the negative with the perfect square. So this is negative 3i radical 2. 45, so this would be 2 times negative 9, neg or times 5 is negative 45. The square root of negative 9 is 3i, times the 2 out front would be 6i radical 5. So let's highlight before we move to the back page. Um, if we have a perfect square underneath the symbol, such as if I pick something different, the square root of negative 81. When you have a perfect square, there is no radical in your answer. It's just simply the square root of that number i because of the negative underneath. When it's a non-perfect square, again, something different, say the square root of negative 6. I can't break down the 6, so I leave the 6 underneath the radical and just pull out the i. And then those that can be simplified, let's just do, you see I used 4, 9, we'll do 16. So negative 48. Since that can be broken down, it's negative 16 times 3. That would become 4i radical 3. So perfect squares have no radical. Non-perfect squares that cannot be simplified, the number still stays underneath, but we pull out the i. And then those that can be simplified, we have the square root of the perfect square factor out front with the non-perfect square underneath with the i out front. On the back side, when we do operations, okay, with square roots that have negative radicands, we first need to rewrite in terms of i, because our answer always needs to be in complex number uh, form, which is in terms of i. We want to pull out that i first. 81 is a perfect square, so this is negative 9i plus uh, negative, the square root of negative 121 is 11i. 
Treat the i's as you would x's at the beginning of the year. All you do is combine the two numbers, so negative 9 plus 11 is a positive 2, and keep the i. Number 11, square root of negative 9 is 3i, times the 2 out front would be 6i, minus, this is 5 times the square root of negative 49, which is 7i, so minus 35i, which is negative 29i. Excuse me. Number 12, I can take the square root of negative 4 because 4 is a perfect square, so that's 2i plus, and 32, I have to break down, it can be simplified, so that's 16 times 2, putting the negative with the perfect square, and this becomes 4i radical 2 plus 2i. Because this term doesn't have a radical 2 attached, I cannot combine those, and this would be a final answer. 48 we just uh, simplified up front, that's 16 times 3, putting the negative with the perfect square. And we also, on the previous page, uh, simplified 12, which is 4 times 3. So we have 4i radical 3 minus 2i radical 3. And because they are like radicals, as they're both in terms of a radical 3, I do subtract 4i minus 2i is 2i, keeping the radical 3. Number 14, 18, we did simplify as 9 times 2, putting the negative there. So this would be 3 times 3i, which is 9i radical 2, plus 72, largest perfect square factor is 36, so negative 36 times 2, which would be plus 6i radical 2. Like radicals, so the final answer, 9 plus 6 is 15i radical 2. 10. 10 is not a perfect square. It cannot be simplified. So all I do is bring out the i because of the negative. So this is 5i radical 10. That's all I can do with that. And then 52 is 4 times 13, putting the negative with the 4. This becomes 2i radical 13. So I have the first term, 5i radical 10 minus 2i radical 13. I cannot simplify because the radicals are not the same. Last one, 27 is 9 times 3, so this would be 3i times 4. <coughs> 12i radical 3 plus 50 is 25 times 2, so putting the negative with the perfect square. We're going to add 5i radical 2. Because I have a radical 2 and a radical 3, we cannot combine, so that is the final answer.